Drums are wings. In fact, they're the better version of wings. I've always tried to make myself very clear on where I land in this matter. There's been an eternal struggle. Some people just believe that wings are flat. You know, those smaller chicken pieces with a lot more bones in them are the only thing that can truly be considered wings. Others acknowledge that drums are also a form of wing and battle between whether or not flats or drums are better. But for me, it's a no brainer. You can get that beautiful crispy exterior and a nice juicy interior all in one. And today I'm gonna make my favorite application of chicken wings, buffalo. Traditional buffalo wings are from Buffalo, New York originally, but I've made a few twists that I think give them a better creaminess and crispiness than your typical buffalo wing. So let's go. To start, let's add in our chicken drums. Like I said, just take a look at this. For starters, you got a nice layer of skin right there that can be really nicely crisped up if you do this correctly. Then just look at how much meat there is. It's a beautiful bulbous shape that puts it in the perfect position to stay very moist on the interior while still allowing your fryer time to get that amazing crispy exterior. To brine them, I first put a couple cups of buttermilk, which obviously has that acidity that breaks down the protein in your chicken wing and gets them nice and tender. That's why you always hear buttermilk fried chicken. The other thing I put in my chicken that a lot of people don't, but that I've taught a lot of people to do lately is some pickle juice. In addition to the acid in pickle juice, you have tons of flavor. And think about it, fried chicken sandwiches often come with a pickle. Why is that? Because pickle and chicken go really well together. And pickle juice just happens to be an amazing way to marinate your chicken. Now, I know you're probably salivating already, but we're gonna let this rest for about a half an hour. You can rest it longer than that if you want, but I found that this is a pretty good amount of time to impart that flavor and then keep cooking. While this marinates, let's work on our buffalo sauce. To start, you'll need a nice stainless steel pan. You can use a pot if you'd like, but I like a wider pan because things cook faster. We'll start with about two thirds cup of hot sauce. You can use pretty much any kind here, but I'm gonna be putting truffle salt in here, so I'm going with truffle. I'll then add in an entire stick of butter that's been cut into cubes. A couple of these are modifications that you would not find in a traditional buffalo sauce recipe but I'm telling you, I've tested with tons of them and this is the way to go. Next, I'll add about a third cup of mayonnaise. Again, one of my modifications that I love. Next, I'll add one and a half tablespoons of white vinegar, about a quarter teaspoon of Worcestershire sauce, a little sprinkle of truffle salt, a pinch of cayenne pepper, and just a little bit of garlic powder. Crank up the heat and begin to whisk until this is fully combined. Eventually, you'll end up with a creamy, mouth-watering buffalo sauce. You can continue cooking over medium heat to thicken it up a little bit more if you'd like, but otherwise, you're done. You can remove this from the heat. Tap off all the excess buttermilk. Now I also like to get my wings really crispy by breading them just a tad bit, which also isn't traditional for buffalo wings. I like to start with about a cup and a half of potato starch, followed by a few teaspoons of garlic powder, a couple teaspoons truffle salt, a few teaspoons of onion powder, a little chili powder, and just a bit of fresh cracked pepper. Then I'll take my mini whisk and just whisk this up a little bit. Then one at a time, I'll toss my chicken into the potato starch and make sure it gets a nice thick coating. Roll it around to make sure that every last nook and cranny has some seasoning, and then set it aside because you're ready to fry. As I state in a lot of my other videos, I like potato starch over flour. It gets everything far crispier, and it's a trick I learned long ago that I've never turned back on. Flour just doesn't get things crispy enough. So if you want some soggy wings, go ahead and use flour. I like to double fry my wings. So to start, we're gonna fry them at 325 for about six to seven minutes. This phase is where I actually like to start cooking them, whereas my second round of frying will actually get them really crispy. Keep in mind, you should start the oil higher than 325 because the temperature will drop as you add in all the wings. Crank the heat up to 375 Fahrenheit and then we'll fry again. Now we fry till they're golden brown. Let them crackle. These are the crispiest babies you've ever seen. I'll place these chicken wings down to let them rest. My hands are really no longer sensitive to heat, so I can touch things that are really hot without it hurting. Add your chicken wings to a bowl, and then pour a nice coat of buffalo all over them. Then it's time to toss these babies around a little bit. Don't be afraid to get messy. That's what cooking's all about. And now I just want you to take one quick look at this chicken wing. First of all, if you're still a non-believer, please try to tell me that this is not a wing. I just don't understand how you can do that. And if you can't agree to that, can you at least agree that this looks ridiculous? And by ridiculous, I mean delicious. Come on, it doesn't get better than this. Just for a quick second, I'd like us all to appreciate this. Now I get it, if you're from Buffalo and you like the traditional wings, sure. But can you really tell me that you don't wanna try these right now? Because these are meant to be eaten right away, we need to do the tests. The most important test in my opinion. Well, one of two, crunchy, and juicy. Does this pass the crunch test? Hmm. It doesn't matter if I'm a biased or unbiased judge. You just heard it with your very own ears. 
Oftentimes, I have people say, Nick, how can you possibly call food sexy? How can a food be sexy? This is how. Okay, everybody, so we clearly passed the crunch test, but how about that juicy test? Those amazing drippings that you get inside a piece of chicken if you squeeze it, which, you know, you're not really supposed to do. Let's see. Mmm, holy f this is absurd. Of all the recipes I made, this lands top five easy. No question. The answer is yes. Yes, it's juicy. I'm trying to find a way to describe the flavor of the buffalo sauce on these wings. You know, normally I dip my wings in the sauce, but this is the sauce. And this is what I've been missing the whole time. Always, I felt that buffalo was just some sort of seasoning on a wing. They always just toss them in hot sauce. And because I'm a bit of a baby with hot sauce, I always have to douse them in blue cheese or ranch. And that becomes my sauce. This is different. And you can control the spice of the sauce yourself. That butter and that mayo gives a perfect creaminess, while the vinegar and the hot sauce give that amazing tangy punch that you're always looking for in an order of buffalo wings. I'm telling you right now, make buffalo wings at home. They are so much better than anything you've ever had before and they're so much different in the best way possible. Thank you, thank you, thank you for loving the videos. Don't forget to subscribe. I have a big notifications gang now. So many people that are subscribing are turning on notifications, which is really exciting to me. Our channel is growing so fast, so thank you for that and keep cooking at home. If you ever have any questions, you always know where to find me. Comment below, message me on Instagram, whatever you need. Also, please don't forget to like this video. That's the kind of stuff that's very simple but keeps me going. I gotta go finish these wings. Peace out.